go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live Accessible, and I am Carrie. Um, today, we're going to be talking about gaming if you're blind or visually impaired. And I have two guests with me, and there might be a third one coming in, um, hopefully later on during the live stream. Um, but first, um, hello to everybody. Um, hopefully you guys can join in in the live chat down below on mobile and to the right on, um, on desktop. Um, so first, also, I want to invite you guys to join the Live Accessible Discord. I'm going to put that in the chat right here if you guys want to um, use that link. <laughs> Actually, it's been really such an amazing time on Discord. Um, and the two guests I have with me, um, Midas and Koda. I'm sure that they can uh, relate to this. I don't think I've ever been on Discord as much as I have been in the past, what is it, week or two? Um, and it's just an amazing community. We talk about being blind, low vision. Uh, we also talk about screen readers. We talk about gaming, anime, um, just sharing our stories and experiences and just it's just a little family and you know i'll be doing a video down the road on how to use discord and it's it's just a really great app um and it's also on desktop too and it's pretty accessible for voiceover talkback nvda and you know any screen reader that you use so without further ado i want to introduce you guys to my two guests like a form more formal introduction there's coda hello and Hi. meet us. Hi, everybody. So for me, I am personally a very, very casual gamer. I have played a few games, um, but I used to watch my brother play games all the time. Um, I would be the one, my brother's deaf. So I, before they put subtitles, I would be trying to sign like all the cutscenes and like try to tell him what was going on because they didn't have subtitles. And so like me and my brother would work as a team and I'd be like there like uh, uh, cheering him on, but also like helping him. And it was just a fun experience. So, but I'm not very good at games. <laughs> I usually end up dying <laughs> a lot and I could never get past things. So I'm going to just turn this over a little bit to Coda and Midas. Um, Coda, could you share uh, your vision and a little bit of your experience um, playing games? Uh, sure. So my name is Fernanda. I'm a blind autistic. I have septo-optic dysplasia, so I have underdeveloped optic nerves. Um, I'm totally blind in my left eye and can see light and shadows out of my right. I started playing video games when I was really little. Um, at, whenever we'd visit our grandparents, they had a room upstairs called the Toy Room. And in the Toy Room was a SNES, or Super Nintendo Entertainment System, also known as the Super Famicom in Japan. And I would listen to my cousins and my siblings play Super Mario Bros, the original Star Fox, uh, you know, like a lot of classics. And it really interests me. I love the sound of MIDI music and um, the sound of uh, all the different button commands was very interesting to me. I loved, you know, hearing Mario jump or, you know, attacking an enemy or, you know, hearing if he failed. And somehow I started to kind of figure it out. I would memorize routes and I could slowly get through levels in certain games, um, not, you know, fluently or well at all, but it was at least. Um, a fun experience for me. Later on, my parents uh, purchased a Nintendo 64. And though my family, as together, we would always play like Mario Kart or Mario Party. Um, I was terrible at them because they're very visual. But I really got into like Zelda and the one person games. And I, I don't know, I really started from there to really get into gaming and to appreciate it for what it is even though I cannot see. Awesome, and I'm sure we're gonna dive in more into that, uh, but go ahead, Minas, introduce yourself and you know your vision as well as you know your experience with gaming. Okay, uh, I'm Minas. Um, wow, I've been gaming since, ooh, it's been a long time. Uh, I'll say since the 
Commodore 64. Um, I guess for the early, my early years, uh, I was better uh, sighted than I am. Um, I've worn glasses since I was five. Um, so I'd say fast forward probably 15 years from there, um, playing all the different consoles out there um, and PC. Um, I guess it wasn't until I would say about 10 years ago, I realized that my vision wasn't very good compared to what it was and things started disappearing. I said, oh no, went to have it checked. They said, oh, look at that. You have cone dystrophy. And so pretty much for the most part, anything past about two, maybe two feet in front of my face, um, it's blurry. Uh, I have a cool magic trick where people disappear, which is awesome. I love it. Uh, only I can see that. But um, it just it's just been a an interesting ride. I'm kind of new to the accessibility world. So most of my gaming um, was me, you know, playing the games. And then when my vision kind of went out or started going out, well, I sort of faked it like I could see that sort of thing. Um, I'm mostly a PC gamer now. Um, and I have been for the probably the past eight years. Well, no, maybe a little more. Um, I do have, you know, PlayStation. I had Xbox. I had, you know, the Wii, you know, Nintendos. And I, I had them all. Um, but, you know, games like shooters and all of that, it just wasn't good for me. Um, I also have a slight photophobia so a lot of the flashing and the in games that are really cool I, I can't play anymore so that that's pretty much the gist of it for me gotcha yeah and like for me i can't imagine my brother loves to play um fp what is it called first fps person, yeah. uh, fps is which FPS. is first person shooters um nice. and I, i'm like i'm scared of that because it's like coming at me and like i can't see the people hiding and yeah i i do ter very terrible at um that kind of games um but i have played a few um games like back in the day um i tried mega man what was it oh, mega man Legend. oh i love mega man <laughs> No series makes me rage more than Mega Man. <laughs> yeah, I just, my brother also had Crash, uh, Crash Bandicoot. Oh, yeah. Yep, and yep. that just went too fast for me. I'm like, slow down. Isn't there a slow mode on this thing? <laughs> it's a fun game. Yeah. And then, terrible platformers. <laughs> <laughs> and also um, Final Fantasy X. Um, I were still Final remember. Fantasy is my childhood. <laughs> I I just I really was into the whole uh, turn by turn thing because you know you could take yeah, your same. time and read each one or like you know memorize the placements of each mm -hmm. kind of move that you could make. Um, and I I also played uh, what was that game that I played uh, a little while ago a blind legend which is an iPhone game oh, which yeah. is completely accessible and it's in I guess you would call that an audio game right um, mm -hmm. and so I I've played a few things but it's not something that I do all the time because again I'm a mom and I just have like so many things to do and I wish I had more time to play. <laughs> Yeah, but go ahead, Koda. What kind of consoles do you, do you use, or do you do PC gaming? Do you like video games or audio games better, or a mix? Oh boy, uh, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. I am definitely a gaming enthusiast. Uh, it was my escape for a very, very long time. Um, I didn't really have friends or anything to do growing up, so gaming was something of an escape and a way for me to kind of put myself in someone else's shoes and kind of have mm. fun in my own way. Um, I 
play everything outside of Xbox. Nothing against Microsoft personally. It's just <laughs> why would you now have gaming PCs, first of all, and then they never had any really of the genre that I like to play. The only game I've ever played on Xbox was the original Tales of Vesperia. And now a definitive edition came out on PS4 and Switch, so I don't need it anymore. Um, I'm definitely a hardcore JRPG player, so I absolutely... What is that? What is that? Uh, a J- role-playing games? What, what kind of role-playing games? Japanese. Oh, Japanese. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I, I play a lot, a lot, a lot of JRPGs from Persona, okay. Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, the Trail series. I, I just love how in depth the world building can be and how um, expressive or creative the characters are within them. And a lot of the combat systems are a lot easier, I think, for me to figure out as a blind person than something more busy like a tactics game or a shooter game. Gotcha. And um, before we continue, I want to say hello to everybody in the chat. I see Addison in here, and there's Joker Alice, Tom Burt, Blind Toes, uh, Dukes of Hazard. Oh, that's an interesting name. Hello, everyone. There's Hi. Marco. Um, there is Cyan4414. He says, again, you forgot about me. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> I'm sorry. You could join us if you'd like to. Um, if you're still in here, let me know, and I can send you um, a StreamYard uh, link. There's Danny Mac. He says, hey, hey. And Dukes of Hazard says, I grew up playing PS2 and Nintendo 64, and my mom had... I- origami nintendo Ooh, that yes. i played um as a kid and then Blytos is saying hello to each other and accessible tech info um is saying hello from india and oh it's morning over there oh, oh good morning yes good morning <laughs> <laughs> all right so um i wanted to ask you both of you what accessibility features do you guys use um, on either console or PC and also you know even if you don't use it um, what kind of accessibility features do you guys know of for gaming um well I will say this (laughs) I want to say probably what was it maybe four days ago when I logged in the Final Fantasy 14 I tried to use the screen reader with it which it sort of worked but it doesn't work it only That's sort of worked yeah it was very disappointing because <laughs> um, i really want to try it It some of the sounds you'll get i'm sorry Midas. Oh. um our our, four, our third guest just arrived All so right. i just want to welcome sean hi I'm, sean i'm, so, I'm sorry welcome, i'm sorry welcome. for my late reply sorry about that <laughs> oh it's no problem um yeah we're just talking a little bit about gaming so right now i'm asking um Midas and coda about you know uh what kind of accessibility features they use and um uh, what other accessibility features they know of. So we'll go around and Midas can finish his reply and then <laughs> we can go around. <laughs> okay, right. sorry. Cool. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, I mean, I'm new to a lot of the accessibility uh, features. You know, I know they're there. I've always known, you know, sometimes even the sighted folks out there, they'll, you know, change some colors or do different things you know because it helps uh, especially when you're playing games that have a lot of color flashing screen shaking you know but i've never truly used them in the sense that i know a lot of you have so I'm, i'm kind of a noob on that but here lately i've started using it so um it's a lot there's a lot to mess with so i am way overwhelmed with it so i am not the person to ask about it right now but i will learn it i will learn it but yeah uh, i love it each of us are kind of have our 
knowledge and our experience with gaming it's like i'm like oh down here and then you guys are like Whoop, up there <laughs> all right so koda why don't you go ahead and share you know what kind of accessibility features you use oh boy yeah i have it down to a science um <laughs> because it's something i've been doing for so long um uh let's plays and walkthroughs are your friend i'll tell you that right now um so I use guides a lot of the time to help me figure out where I'm supposed to be going. Let's plays are when like someone's commentating over the game and I find let's players who will read the dialogue aloud and they'll also like give commentary on what's going on or where they need to go or how they can best uh, do the quest that needs to be done. And so that will help kind of give me an idea of what's happening and where I need to go. You can also find scripts to certain games, especially Japanese games online. So I'll sometimes download the scripts and then have those as well. And that will speed up processes as well. Um, I use SuperSense. That is the best um, OCR app that I found that's able to read most uh, fonts when it comes to reading dialogue on like a TV or monitor screen. Um, and if all else fails, I call in what has been jokingly re been referred to as Team B. Um, and that's either my sister or a friend. And I will either have them come over if they're around or um, I'll just call them like via FaceTime or Discord and be like, please save me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening, help. And so, you know, there's all kinds of options out there. Sometimes I have used um, Be My Eyes or Ira and they've caught me in some pretty odd situations from time to time. It's like, why are you walking into a wall? I don't know. Um, <laughs> a lot of it just comes down to, though, trial and error. You know, try something. If it doesn't work, try something else and just laugh about it. And um, you, you'll, you'll figure it out eventually. Awesome. I love it. All right, Sean, um, before you answer this question, why don't you introduce yourself um, and talk about how much vision you have, as well as like your experience with playing games? Okay. Um, so yeah, sorry, again, that I kind of joined a little late. Um, I have low vision. I have um, an eye disease called optic nerve hypoplasia. Um, basically, the games that I play are like mostly, I have all systems like PS4 or PS5, you know, Nintendo Switch, you know, the Xbox. Um, I mean, recently, my favorite system would have to be either the PS5, um, you know, or the Switch. But um, when it comes in terms of like gaming, Usually, if there's, like, text on the screen, I usually try and, like, push, put my face, like, right up to the screen, try and read that way. Um, if not, I usually use, um, I don't know, because you said you use SuperSense. I use uh, Seeing AI for iPhone. Yeah, I um, used to use that as well. Yeah, yeah. How have you found that compared to uh, SuperSense? I found SuperSense to be a lot faster. That's why I switched. Oh, I still okay. use seeing AI for its other capabilities for like daily life, but in gaming, I just find SuperSense to be a lot more accurate. Oh, okay, I I understand. Um, but yeah, I do that. And when it comes to like if I need help or anything, there's this neat feature on the PlayStation side of things. It's called Share Play. And basically what you can do is you can have a friend like actually remotely. You don't even have to have them next to you. They can remotely connect to your game. It's safe. You know, they don't have to have your information or your password or email or anything. Basically, they connect to your PlayStation. They help you and they can like show you where you need to go. And you can still see them like playing for you, basically. Um, it's a really neat feature. Um, so I use that occasionally. Um, the Xbox side, unfortunately, doesn't have that feature. Um, they do have the narrator, and PlayStation has it as well. Um, so, yeah, and then for when it comes to, like, PC gaming, because I also play on Steam, um, PC gaming, uh, uh, 
it's not the most accessible when it comes to like um narrators or like anything like that but i mean if you do have a screen reader you can manage with steam um <laughs> So, yeah, that's pretty much what I do when it comes I'm really curious, Sean, um, have you used any um, Steam um, games or I don't know how to phrase it, but have you used it with Windows Magnifier at all? Um, I've, I've tried to use games with Magnifier. The problem is when you sometimes do that, it's not exactly the... It, it kind of is a little unstable because when you're when you're playing games I've, I've done it with a few games but mostly what i'll do it in games and any kind of game is if i need to read like text or menus or something i'll just scan it with like OC, either ocr or um you know super sense or like seeing ai now speaking of pc the good thing is though they have programs where you can OCR you can OCR the actual screen with by using like there's I think it's uh what's that program called it's not JAWS it's the other one uh in, NVDA I think it has one yeah NVDA yeah that one um but yeah you can use that also to um you know um scan the screen for text and it's pretty it's pretty well done there's a guy on um twitch and youtube his name is super blind man and he does a lot of text text-based games um hmm. so yeah i think jaws also has um ocr too so you could yeah, yeah, i guess yeah. you could potentially use both yeah it it's it's quite interesting um but anyway i'm sorry <laughs> i'll uh i'll uh, pass it along. Uh, <laughs> I just want to um, touch base with the chat. Of, um, let's see. Blind Warrior says, so glad to join you. No, um, He's saying that he can no longer play games, but maybe they can start um, looking at audio games that I mentioned. So I guess we could also talk about um, audio games. Um, oh, there, have there's, you guys... a, there's oh, a lot wow. I have to talk about with accessible games. I'll, I'll get into that. <laughs> one. Oh, wow. That's, that's all you because uh, my yeah. accessibility is two friends of mine that I've been gaming with for years. They say, hey, we're going this way. I say, where? They say, hold on. They pop out a mount. They pop out whatever. They say, can you see me? Yes, I see you. All right, we're going this way. And that's it. That's my yeah. accessibility. I've, I've, done, I've done that too. I mean, if it works. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, most of the games that I've been playing these last many years has been mainly MMOs. So, you know, you have that yeah. open world, mm -hmm. you know, you do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, we're going to whatever, which is clean across the map. And I'm like, what? Wait. You know, and I'm zoom I am zooming in with Windows Magnifier. I use that a lot. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm zooming in, I'm looking like where, where, you know, because most of the maps and games are not, not that great. Um, and then they get frustrated and they're like, you know what, just hold on. And then they'll <laughs> pop out a mount. They say, get on. And I'm like, all right, let's go. So it, it's, that's, that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, wow. ESO, um, star Wars, you know, the, pro the yeah. problem, all I of found, them. Uh, sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead, go ahead. The, the problem I found with two things I've found. The problem I found with MMOs is very complicated to learn, especially in new MMO. Um, yeah. You know, ESO is not too bad because it's it's made for consoles. It was consoleized and it was right. dumbed down for the casual MMO player. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <Right>. But... <laughs> um, but there's some really intricate MMO games out. Like oh, definitely. Right. I yeah, remember there's... when I was in middle school, and uh, no, I think pretty much middle school. I used to play RuneScape. <laughs> oh yes, that's a classic. That a, and that's a I think one. I um that one I used um, Zoom Text back when I was still using Zoom Text, and 
I can't tell you like <laughs> how much Zoom text hated RuneScape. It really didn't like it. And I so could imagine, was, yeah. I would have to turn Zoom text off and then on again, and then like this, the screen would like get stuck on a frame of like the world or whatever. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I wish I, I was like, I wish I could just use the arrow keys and move around. But no, you gotta click, click. <laughs> oh, but, wow. Yeah, um, I'm getting I, scared now because <laughs> I'm having to start using this stuff and all no, these well, stories. you know, Windows Magnifier <laughs> is so much better than Zoom Text. Um, when you think about like um, just how much system resources it needs, like Zoom Text will eat up like your GPU, your CPU, whatever it is. Wow. I don't even know, but like Windows Magnifier is a lot uh, lighter, and so right, yeah, I mean, because yeah. it was built into the system, it, so right. Yeah. And it has been pretty smooth with with a lot of the different games I've played. Um, you know, it. I, I think maybe a few times, you know, I would zoom in and then it would hiccup. So then, like, I'm stuck zoomed in until mm. I do something. But that's very rare. I wonder like, if you, like, change your resolution and, like... Uh, what is it well, called in the games? Uh, your the frames per second or whatever. <laughs> for me, it's it's partly because you know, and y'all can't see, but I have triple monitors because I built a oh. gaming setup. Windows does not vision. like triple monitors. Mm, yeah, no. Windows it doesn't does, even like double. Does not play well <laughs> yeah. with triple monitors, and and they're not. They're all separate, so. No. Yes, and it it hates it. So, you know, when I'm playing games, uh, well, like Final Fantasy, which, you know, it, it, you can do or have a pretty good resolution, which it doesn't matter to me. I can't really tell the difference. But, you know, you get games like Heroes of the Storm, which you, you have this awesome resolution, but it's <laughs> bigger than your screen, you know, and, and it's downscaling. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah. And you're doing whatever. And then you zoom in real quick and you z try to zoom out and it hiccups mm, and you're yeah. seeing the bottom right corner, <laughs> you know, blown up in your face and you're like, what's going on? You know, so yeah, there's, yeah. There's, it, it's, it's kind of suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joker Alice says Legend of Zelda is awesome. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. And Blytos says that he's more of an old school uh, mental, what is this? Mental mapping and memorizing. So I yes, think that's a that's little bit of what you do. Yeah. Uh, Dukes of Hazard says, I like playing Guitar Hero. Man, I can't do that. That's oh, too fast. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can play anyway. on normal or, or the the... There's a slow speed. Well, it's kind of slow speed. <laughs> <laughs> kind of slow. Uh, no, that's another one. I, I had that and would play it with my kids, and they're over there all experted out, and I'm over here on medium or slow, and they're like, come on, Dad, you can get it. And I'm like, I got it. <laughs> so, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's when you know. Danny or, Marie. OC says, hey, how did I get left out of the gaming chat? <laughs> come join. Yeah, come, come join. Come on in. I think she's um, getting dinner ready, but that would be fun if she could have, um, if she can come. So, Danny, if you do want um, the link, I can send you that in Twitter. Um, Kaushik says, I play Survive the Wild with NVDA. Um, oh, which, interesting. I didn't know that that was pretty accessible. I'll have to try that. Is that a is that a video game, audio game? Do you know Coda? Yeah, it's like a roguelike. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm um, curious. Anyone here play uh, Breath of the Wild? Legend of I have it. I gave up. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's no. an open world game, which I appreciate in theory, but the problem is, is that it's so open world that I never know where I am in the world. <laughs> Oh, wow. So I get lost really, really easily. Um, and I don't always know. There's these main bosses called Guardians. And uh, they kill you basically in one hit. 
oh, and they're no. just free roaming. And <laughs> um, yeah, they terrified me. <laughs> I'm like, this is yeah, yeah. But I that in a lot stuck. of the uh, dungeons are very, guess, very visual. I got oh, but, stuck on the first puzzle dungeon. I couldn't figure out where to go, what to do. Yeah, the the oh, wow. dungeons I always had to deal with a sighted friend or family member. Oh, by the way, Sean, um, Danny says that um, Xbox has a feature like the one you were talking about for PlayStation, and it's called Copilot. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it does. It is called Copilot, but the problem is you can't do it remotely. Copilot oh. is basically like you share either a controller or something, but you can't do it over the internet as far as I'm aware of. You, it's not like PlayStation. <laughs> So I know for uh, my brother recently got a Xbox um, Series X, and so um, I know me and Sean were talking about this last night. Um, the Xbox has narrator and the magnifier, and the magnifier, um, as I understand it, Sean, it works like during a game. You can turn it on and off, uh, whereas narrator it'll work with like the Xbox uh, interface. But most of the time, it doesn't work with like the actual game, right? Is that right? I mean, oh. unless the game has like a lot of first-party Xbox games have like first-party like studio games like Gears of War and like some some of the other first-party like Crackdown. They actually have like menu narration, um, mm. and it'll actually like read the menus to you. And it'll read some of the in-game stuff, but in terms of like third-party stuff and other games, it's not really like it's just mainly the Xbox narrator is for the Xbox menus and for like reading your profile and other stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. What about on the PlayStation? What um, what kind of features, accessibility features, does it have? Um, my favorite feature from the PlayStation 5 is the 3D audio. Hmm. Like, that is absolutely amazing. It really helps me figure out where I am in the world. Because it can tell you, oh, an enemy is to your, like, at 11 o'clock. Or an enemy is at, like, 4 o'clock. And so it gives you a much more accurate representation of where you are versus where, like, the enemy is or where you need to go. And Does it actually tell you that the enemy no, is but at like or it, you can just hear it. You can hear it because okay, it's directional okay. audio. So oh, like an enemy is creeping up behind you, you hear it from behind you, that's and cool. that's you been wear really immersive. You don't have to, but I imagine using uh, just speakers unless you like have it loud. It's not going to be as immersive. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you have to have compatible 3D hardware though to use it. Yeah. Like you, you can't I just use, absolutely you, love it. You can't just use any headphones. And do you have the 3D head headphones that you yeah. can get for it? Oh, because I heard mixed things about them. I heard they're pretty good. Some people said they're pretty good, and some people said they're really good. So Yeah, I, I think they work very, very well. And then also the haptic feedback that you get from the controller is very nice as well. It's a lot more accurate than yeah, what was with the, the DualShock 4. Yeah, the haptics um, are amazing. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Is there a screen reader or magnifier on PlayStation 2? Yes, yes there, PlayStation yes. 4 and 5. Yes, okay, yes, there is. On 5, about, it's much better. So. Really? Oh, by far, yes. Now I have to go find it. <laughs> Good, <laughs> Good luck. luck. Yeah, PlayStation 5 have been out forever. They're... No, I mean on my PS4. I, I need to go find uh, yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Because... Um, I did not know that it was on there. Yeah. Yep. Wow. What about for any other consoles? Um, I don't know. I'm I really mad that the Switch is not accessible. It like, is, that screen is that so is small. That is one console that makes me very sad. I don't play it near as much as I want to just because it's really accessible. It, um, it has magnifier, though. I mean, I'm blind. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but not, yeah the Nintendo kind of dropped the ball for that, like really. Yeah. For that. Uh, that, I love Nintendo as in their first party games, but like yes. in regards to accessibility, they're yeah. the absolute worst. And I, I mean that with love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even their games aren't accessible. Really. Oh no! Good luck playing 
any game because there's no dialogue. There's just sounds. Like Animal yeah. Crossing has animalese and they just yes. make strange sounds and, at and each other. Like, oh, like good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's when I had to really get creative with learning dialogue. Uh, yeah. Memorizing games, basically. I used to have like all of Ocarina of Time memorized. Really? Damn. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Danny is... in the in the chat, Danny saying magnifier is a challenge with gaming. It makes it super easy to miss things on the screen. So I guess. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I can imagine that since you're only looking at like a certain part of the screen. I guess like uh, with Metis, you know, it's good to turn it on and off. Even though it might, it might mess with your PC. Well, I have a key bound to my mouse, so you know, I just kind of, <gasps> you know, oh, I'm sorry. When I'm Hello, asleep. doggy. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. You know, I click it on. I see what I need to see. Click it off, and then I go mm -hmm. back to whatever. You there's know, a hot key for it on Windows too. So. Yeah, yeah. There's a. You have the hot key, so I just have that key bound to my mouse, and I'm good. But at first, I was using the keyboard, and mm. it's like I don't even remember it now. It was I think it's like shift and the plus or minus on the other side. And I'm oh, like, yes, like Windows, zooming. Yeah. Windows like, plus and Windows minus. You know, yeah. So I'm running, and you know, because I'm on the keyboard and mouse, I'm running, and all of a sudden, oh no! And then I click it, and you got to go back to find the keys. That sounds really um, clunky. Oh, oh, no. it was, <laughs> It, it gets bad when when you're in games where you're in dungeons or raiding. Um, I'm just thinking of like Diablo. I'm like, that would be a nightmare. Even Diablo, like <laughs> you're running around on Diablo and then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, I got to zoom in. And then you zoom in, but then something's hitting you. And you're like, <laughs> yep. oh, no. And you're trying to fight <laughs> and then zoom back out. And you're like, what the heck? Come on. And it's not going fast enough. And then you die and then you're like oh <laughs> what happened you know but like raiding you know you have eight plus other people and i i'm usually a healer so i gotta keep these people alive and they're running all over the place and standing in different <laughs> colored stuff see that's why i don't play multiplayer <laughs> games because i I'm like that's way too much pressure that i have anxiety as enough as it is i don't need other people's lives depending on me and if i mess up no <laughs> i was at first because you know I, I was a pretty good healer you know with the vision i had but now i'm like look i'm gonna stand mm -hmm. over here <laughs> I have the people I know I need to heal. I just start throwing excess heals. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, we're doing so great. And I'm like, yeah, you just, I'm just doing my I thing. I would just like to be like a black mage <laughs> shooting from the, the sidelines, be like, yeah, that, I'm contributing. That's pretty much, <laughs> that's how it goes. I'm just like, yeah, all right. And they're like, oh, you got to watch out. And, and then I move left or right, and it's kind of a 50 50. Yep. Like, well, I'm going to move left. Boop, you died. Oh, oh well, no. no. <laughs> so, you know, but again, I have those those two friends who were like, you need to move to the left. Move to the left. And so I'm moving <laughs> to the left. Or, One you know. thing about like um, MMOs is difficult. It's like the, the chat. And I'm like, I can't follow the chat. And like, I never, I stop the reading game the chat. Same time, and I'm like, yeah. okay, well, goodbye, chat. Exactly. I just, <laughs> I don't I just, read it. I don't Chat on read MMO it. games are so toxic anyway. It's oh, like, really? True, yeah. true. But at times you have people who, you know, for a long time I've been, you know, like Ventrilo, if you all remember. Ventrilo, oh, yes. Yeah. Team Speak. Well, yeah, Team Speak. Oh, yeah. And then there were others. But when Discord came out, that was awesome because of what it can do. So. I never read the chat because guess what? Those two friends, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, you just be so, on the, so and so yeah. is whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, really? You know, while I'm sitting there healing or tanking and, you know, they're mm -hmm. like, I, I don't pay attention. So I've I've been in groups where people have been just trashing me. And I have no <laughs> idea because I didn't read the chat. So, hey, you know, offended, whatever works, you know. And they're like, did you see what they said or, you know, whatever, whatever. I was like, no, I, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. So, 
And, and since you're talking about Discord, um, it's it's just want to remind everybody, you know, if you are not yet in our Discord server, it would be awesome if you guys joined. We have so much fun in there, and that's how I so met these fun. three wonderful people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. We have um, tea time. Oh, we have like a our morning like tea, coffee, like what is it, breakfast? Breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Our breakfast. Are we like, just say like, good morning to everyone? Yeah. It's nice. It has like that really family feel, you know. I, I I really like that. But we also talk about serious things and fun things, all, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> And then, Dan oh, Danny Mac says magnifier can't handle the frame the frame rates of games. So right. yeah, that's, that's oh so boy. True. Yeah. And Tom Burt says that he has the same problem. And oh, okay. So why don't we start talking about a little bit about audio games? I know Sean, you know a lot about oh, this, yeah. and maybe you you too, Coda. <laughs> um, so Blind Warrior would like to know more about that, and I'm sure a lot of others too. Okay, Cody, you want to go first or I can go first? It's up to you. You can go first. Okay. Um, oh, there's a lot I have to talk about this subject. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've played a few different audio games. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are, some of them are very basic. And when I mean very basic, I mean basically press left and right arrow keys and press the space bar pretty much. Um, recently I played a game called Blind Drive, and basically what that is, it's, if anybody hasn't played it, it's really funny and really cool. Basically, you're in this car, and you have to dodge, like, traffic. Basically, it's, 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 it's interesting. It sounds stupid, but it's, it's a really interesting game, and it gets harder and harder as you go along, <laughs> Um, and then I played a game called Hell Hunter, which is kind of like a, um, vampire slash demon, like, hunting game. Um, it, it was pretty good. Um, it w wasn't, wasn't the best, and it wasn't bad. Um, so, that was a good one. Um, then also, I think everyone's heard of A Blind Legend, you know, that's like the most popular one out there. Yeah, that's what um, I played, and I never finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's like a really popular popular one. And then there's also one coming out in the future. Um, there's also one coming out in the future. It's coming to Xbox, I think, and PlayStation. I forget what the name of it is though. It's like you you have like swords, and you get like an arrows and swords, and you find this guy and you team up with him and you do quests and stuff. It's, it's quite interesting. The sound is really good in it too. So, hmm. um, hmm. so yeah, those are just some of the ones. Um, but then I've played really bad ones. I've played like just like $2 games from the iOS store, like blind bowling, <laughs> which is like some of these really terrible budget games and it's like oh my god <laughs> um i also know but, um dice world is like a oh, popular yeah. one too isn't it mm -hmm. yeah uh, i mean it is popular i've never played it because i'm not really into dice but <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, I think there's like an accessible Uno game on iOS too. I'm not sure. I believe I so, there was but I've one. never played it. Um, yeah. So yeah, when it comes to audio games, there's some decent ones, but I would recommend actually playing real AAA games. And after, um, you know, after you guys talk about audio games, I'm going to really get into some accessible games that I could really recommend for, like, PlayStation and Xbox. And, you know, then, then the real fun begins. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it uh, off to you guys now. I just, uh, I'm just trying to catch up on the chat, but the more that we keep talking, the more the chat's coming. And that's I'm trying to... Well, that's good. <laughs> There's, um, there's a lot since since yeah. the early games. I mean, like I haven't played a sports game since, and I'm dating myself, but since 
Tecmo Bowl on the Super NES. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, Madden oh, yeah. 21 is accessible. I was going to say, I know the newest Madden is. Is it? A friend uh, of mine huh. plays it, and this, she's totally blind. Oh, and I am so sorry, Blind Warrior. Okay, she she is a she, not a he. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yay, more blind gamers. Yay. Uh, I'm just trying to just make sure that um, there aren't any questions. I think that a lot of people are talking to each other. Um, so if you guys have a question, could you just uh, ask it again? <laughs> I don't see any more questions, but if um, if I missed your comment, just um, you know, just ask it again and we'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, so go sure. ahead and um, you know talk about some of the games that you guys find most accessible or that you've heard of that is accessible and things like that. I don't you know guys who are wants the to... gurus. <laughs> I'm learning. For, I'm learning from all of you. So, I mean, I could yeah. tell you from the sided side, or that I remember. I mean, for most of them, but even that, um, everything that I had to do in order to continue playing some of them, you know, it's just the usual hacks that all of us have developed, you know. And, and trying to play these games, which I know I know a lot of blind and visually impaired. They're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, play like MMOs and multiplayer games. But believe it or not, uh, it actually shocked me. There, there are a lot. Like in, in the gaming circles that I was in, I did not know that a large majority of my friends I'm playing with, a lot of them are visually impaired, you know, or, you know, they have the, you know, one blind eye and they're playing or, um, you know, a, a really awesome friend of mine, you know, had uh, ocular albinism and was playing this multiplayer game. And we never knew until, you know, we all became friends. And I'm like, whoa, what? That's that's awesome. So I know there's fear. I know there's anxiety. I know there's, you know, well, you know, I don't want to let people down and blah, blah, blah. But in this day and age, even amongst the cited in MMOs, half the time, most people don't even care. So if you run off to the side and fall off the edge on accident, we're all going to laugh about it. And, and then we'll wait for the next person to do the same thing. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, it just, you know, go out there and try it. I mean, if it, if it's, if it works out, that's great. If not, you know, again, there's, millions of games probably for you but don't be afraid to try it um the communities in a lot of these games too you know yeah there's there's a few toxic communities in some of the mmos but for the most part a lot of them they are no nonsense as far as toxicity they they don't they don't mess around with that so you know Gotcha. And um, I'm just reading the, the trying to catch up on the chat. Um, Joker Alice wants to know if you guys use a controller when you're playing PC games or do you guys use the keyboard? Always. Always, always a controller. Use. Yeah, I always really? use a controller. It's just I, I don't. The way <laughs> my setup, the way my setup is, I can't use a keyboard and mouse because I'm using a 55 inch TV. So like. Having my hand in one position and the other hand on the other side of the the TV is like really uncomfortable and awkward. So interesting. Oh, okay, yeah, and also I guess the keyboard doesn't give you the haptics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and it's just that too, and you know, it's a lot of other factors. And I prefer playing on a controller and gotcha. like, yeah. Danny Marie's ASC says um, that there's also the Swamp game that Whistler was playing. Uh, I think that's a Whistler is Theory of a Blind Man, and he, I know he also does um, gaming as well. Even um, I recently I've seen James Rath doing oh, some yeah. some gaming, yeah. and um, um, also we haven't even mentioned Minecraft. I've heard. At least <laughs> I haven't played it, but that they have different mods or something or to help it be more accessible. And now it reads out some of the like the, your inventory. And um, somebody said in the chat that it reads the, the Minecraft 
live chat or the chat too. Um, I don't know if you guys have played Minecraft at all, but I have seen um, some other people who are blind and visually impaired um, playing Minecraft. So I think that's pretty uh, cool. You want my honest opinion? Like, I think, <laughs> sure. I think, I think Minecraft is a very visual game, period. Mm. Like, that's building, what I was thinking too. The way you have to build stuff and the way you have to connect things and really? do certain things, there's only a certain amount that you can make it accessible. Mm. And I mean, that's yeah. glad that they did make it accessible, but it's just. If you ever see some of these elaborate things that people make, it's like, okay, sure, you can play it with assistance and whatever, but how much are you really going to be able to build, you know? Yeah, I totally understand that. So, <clears throat> so go ahead. I think we kind of stopped or I interrupted you guys um, talking about like other games that you play. So on what you find accessible. So I think I interrupted you, Sean. <laughs> so you can continue talking. Oh, about um, games. you want me to, you want me to talk about some like actual accessible games or more yeah. like audio. Okay. Um, oh, both. We could talk about both. Um, okay. Well, there is one game. I don't know if, Unless you've been living under a rock, I think a lot of people have been talking about it recently. Um, there's this game called Last of Us 2 for PS4 and PS5. It is basically the most accessible game, period. It's like AAA game, period. Mm -hmm. Basically, it has full navigation assistance. Basically, like it'll lead you through the entire levels. Mm -hmm. You can aim assist like basically you know when you're hitting the head or the you know the body or the feet or whatever when you're shooting it's amazing it tells you when you pick up items what you're getting how much of it it is like one of the most incredible accessible games ever and there's a guy named super blind man who was the consultant for the game oh nice oh that's yeah. what is it called again it's called The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us 2. Okay, I, I guess I'm one of those people living under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, but no, seriously, it like narrates everything. It, that sounds so cool. It's like you you would be uh, amazed by the, inc like the, the crazy amount of features and accessibility options. Like it, it's just... It blew me away. Like it was like, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> that really awesome. sounds so cool. Honestly, yeah. that sounds really cool. But is it like, could you do it on PC? Or... Uh, no, it's only it's only a PlayStation. It's only on PlayStation. So. What? Yes, <laughs> I'm with you with a lot of games. They're they're only console. They're um, only for the console. That's why I get them. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> now, there are games on on the pc that are accessible um i will get into that there's a game called resident evil 6 which mm -hmm. has unintentional accessibility and what i mean about oh, okay. what i mean about that is basically when you hold a button it'll point you to the objective that you need to go to <laughs> And when you do that, you can basically get through most of the game. And I'm not going to say all the game because there's puzzles in the game. And what you can do, though, is you can play the game co-op. So you can either follow your partner or follow the objective. And your partner could help you with the puzzles or whatever. But it's full accessible with that feature it's basically like oh okay where do i need to go push this button and it'll point me toward my objective it's it's really cool too so um that's interesting <clears throat> that's cool and another game is cool. another game is um have any of you played skyrim or fallout fallout oh, 4 so yeah. yes. I yeah. tried to play Skyrim, but I ended up just giving the controller to my brother because I'm like, I, I have no idea what's going <laughs> okay. on. Okay. I can't see the menu. <laughs> you, hear me out. Okay. There's, there's something that 
a lot of people don't know about that game, don't know about Skyrim and Fallout 4. Now, this is just for low vision users um, right now. I'm, I'm going to be addressing. Um, there's a feature in Skyrim. You actually have to... You actually have to get out of, like, the main dungeon, but that's not hard to do because you can follow the actual person's voice. Um, when you get out into the actual game, there's a spell you can buy. It's called Clairvoyance. And what that does is it lights up this big blue path that you can follow. It's, like, basically like a golden trail. Mm. And it will lead you to your objectives all throughout the game so basically you can use that spell and then go through the game by using that spell and i've gotten i've gotten through the game pretty much by using that spell Mm -hmm. that's so cool i have to try it i haven't tried the magnifier yet it's because i'm i'm looking at like all these menus and i'm like wow this is so small and the thing is like i have to go close to the screen and so i'm like actually moving like my whole body to the left and then i have to move my whole body to the right like to go mm-hmm. yeah to the yeah other I'm, side I have of the to tv that. and I have to do that too. Yeah. yeah and i'm like what i i don't even know See, like i just have someone <laughs> read them aloud and then i write them down like on my browser oh, really? on my phone and then i memorize them yeah Huh. So, um, yeah. cool. now when it comes to, I'm sorry, I'm taking everybody. Um, oh, go ahead. No. Now We're learning comes, a lot. No, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <learning>. <laughs> when I'm it learning. comes to, when it comes to Fallout 4, um, you can do pretty much the same thing, but there's a thing you can use. It's called Vans. It's a, an, like another spell similar to like Skyrim. Basically, when you, it's a perk you can get for, like, leveling up and stuff. And basically what it does, the same thing when you use VATS and Fallout, you can, it'll show you the objective. Like, it'll highlight the golden path objective to your, like, where you're supposed to go and everything. And it's really handy. It's basically, like, the exact same thing, which not a lot of people know. But not a lot of people use it, and I don't think a lot of people know about it, but... Yeah, it's it's really handy for people that have trouble figuring out where to go or, you know, can't see the objective or something. Yeah, I'm kind of that way. Like, when I did play, I'm like, I don't know which way to go. I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. I'm going around in circles. <laughs> no, like- yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I will say that a lot of MMOs um, have features. Mainly, it would probably benefit the low vision but, um, you know, there, there are a lot of, the, you know, the arrow that points, it's huge. It shows you where to go or the blinking on the map or, mm. you know, different <laughs> things like that. And it, it's, it's kind of standard in a lot of games. Um, it, it's, but some games, you know, you go through the accessibility menus and, and just there's a lot of stuff there. It's just... Mm. I haven't quite used it yet, so I'm still learning that. As far speaking as of <laughs> speaking of MMOs being accessible, did you guys know that Black Desert Online has a, an accessibility feature that was kind of not really intended as well? Yes. Basically, you can you can basically walk to you, you basically auto run to your objective. Auto, yes. And, auto and is lot, so helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's a basically a line on the mini map that'll show you where you need to go as well. So, and there's also an option that will map, you know, show you the dotted line. So if you, you know, stray off of it or whatever, yeah, you'll yeah. see the, you know, for the low vision, you'll definitely see that line, and you can get back on it and yeah, continue on even if you stop to do something. It's it's a really great feature that. That's I neat. wish other games had. Yeah, it is definitely. Um, Danny, Danny Marie AOC AUC. I'm so sorry. So it also says there is a VI Minecraft streamer as well. Uh, Logic Pro X. Um, he streams on YouTube. Yeah, he's on our Discord server. 
Yeah, I've, I've also seen him do that. And Ju Julia says, I'm downloading Blind Legend. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. It's, it's not a bad game. It's, it's just there's this part in the game you will get stuck at. And the reason you'll get stuck at it is because they don't explain in the tutorial what you need to do. And when you do get stuck at that part, I will give you a hint. You have to press back. You have to press back on the right stick and then forward. It's this, it's this weird thing, and I, like it seems like everybody gets stuck at that part, and like it's so weird. I don't think I got stuck on that part. I think I just, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I think I just died too many times. Um. Dan Danny Marie also says that a lot of the blind and VI community has also been playing Hades, but I don't know much about that Ooh, one. Oh, Hades. Really? Yeah. How? That's a game that I've been kind of interested in. I've always wanted to get more into roguelikes, but it's just you want to know very how? chaotic. Yeah. You want is it does everybody want to know how that works? Because I watched I watched a guy stream that who's completely blind as well. Basically, what it is, is everything in that game makes a specific sound. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the hub area where you talk to the different people. Whether it's the actual, you know, place where you fight people. And basically, it's that's basically how it works. And then the doors, after you kill the enemies, the doors will make a sound after you kill them. So you'll mm -hmm. know where the doors are in the level to move on to the next level. I'll have to experiment a little with it. Yeah, it's 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 really it's really unique. It's really interesting. There's also a uh, mod you can download for it that makes it uh, more accessible for blind and low vision. Larry is asking, is there any racing games for iOS that you know of that is accessible to, to the visually impaired? Um, there are, but I've never played them because racing games I wouldn't play regardless. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there are, but how good they are is another story. <laughs> do you, do you yeah. happen to know any of the, the names? Or um, I think it was like uh, I forget. It was like blind something racer, or I I, f I forget the exact name. I'm sorry. Um, gotcha. I could look it up later and post it. I've heard Forza. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I was like, I think Forza, well, no, but I've no, never no, no, no. played it, so I don't know. But so don't, I, yeah. don't take my word. The for only that. thing. Sorry, the only thing that's accessible in Forza is the menu narration. Oh, <laughs> when wow. it comes, well, to like that I game. know that with one of the uh, one of the driving games that they were doing like an auto pathing or like a guidance, um, with the driving function. So I don't know which game that was though. I uh, yeah, I don't. I just I remember don't, hearing it. Oh, you at know, an E3 oh, I know last what it was. Watch, Do Watch Dogs Legion. You can auto drive basically to the to the objective really but i need i need to, to pass that on to a friend who can't drive in games yeah. <laughs> um that's interesting and um blind warrior says thank you for the correction i just recently lost my eyesight so i am just trying to get connected with the blind community and have very low vision in one eye and blind in the other. So yeah, I'm so glad that you found uh, Live Accessible and you know, you could join Discord. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of great people on there. Um, and also there's just Facebook too. There's so many groups on Facebook, uh, whether it's um, just being blind or visually impaired and there's just so many, like I have a list on, on um, the Live Accessible website for like all these Facebook groups, there's like over a hundred. It's like just crazy. Um, and I'm sure there's probably one about gaming too. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, probably the, I don't know, Sean, is there like a blind gamers discord server or something? That'd be cool. Um, there is a guy. Um, actually, he's really impressive. He just ran a fighting game tournament. His name is OBS Rattlehead. Um, he's on Twitch and he's on YouTube. 
On YouTube, he's known by OBSKH Rattlehead, and he also has a Discord server. Um, but I think it's invite. I don't. I don't know if it's invite only. I could ask him. Um, but he basically is amazing at fighting games. He's like one of the best people I've seen at fighting games. Like with an eye. And he's condition. totally blind, right? Yes, he is totally blind. Yes, and he plays fighting games like like basically somebody that would be almost pro. Oh my gosh. I don't know yeah. how does he, how so like what kind of accessibility or how does he like handle okay. those things? So he actually was a consultant with um you know he he talked to the studio and he actually got some accessibility options put in the game. Like for example, there's um there's these interactables like where you can throw certain objects in the game. Basically, they beep and they make a sound when you're on the when you're near them, and then also there's really good footstep sounds. There's really good like sounds for when you do certain things, so it's really really good. Um, the the name of the game is called Mortal Kombat 11 that he plays now. So um, that's interesting. So, yeah, and I think yeah. You mentioned that you played um, on the in the tournament too, right? Yeah, I did. I did play in the tournament uh, with everybody. There was probably about thirty five people or so, maybe That's in so there. Cool. And, yeah, it was. It was so you like you got to watch him. He's like a really amazing guy. He, he's he's really chill too. And now yeah. I think he's going to be doing some kind of like. Uh, he's gonna be on an actual like Xbox thing. What is that? Like he's gonna be live with Xbox or something. Oh yeah, that was for the tournament. That was he. Oh, the top oh so eight. that was on the tournament. Yeah, the top cool. eight okay. of the of the uh, participants. Like uh, they were they were actually live on the official Xbox channel. That's so cool. cool. That's really cool. I um, mean, yeah. with a lot of the game, you know. I used to do the the PvPing and the battle royales and all that. And once my yeah. vision started going, a lot of those games, you know, the shooters and all that, I'm pretty good at it. But once my vision really started to go, I strayed away from a lot of those games because it was like, well, I don't have do, the alertness. And do you like Gears of War? Yes. Okay. I love Ge um, Gears of War. Did you play Gears Five yet? No. Okay, you need to play Gears of War 5. And the really? reason I say that is because there are full me there's full menu narration first of all. Um there is an option when you play like horde mode, you know, like okay. the waves of enemies, yeah. there's an option to find the fabricator by ping like sound. Oh, sweet. There's an option to auto like aim assist. Um and then there's like many different assisting uh, options, so like I think you would quite enjoy the game. Right, that would be awesome. Uh, one game, uh, World of Tanks, has mods that do that, like aim assist. So it gives you that audi audi audible sound, um, like yeah. when the uh, reticle, you know, does that. But a lot of the other games, I just was like, well. You know, this is going to be too much of a hassle, or I'm just like, well, I'll just face this way and kick or shoot or <laughs> whatever and call it a day, <laughs> you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, you know, meanwhile, the group is, has burnt off, you know, they're, they're just gone. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going over here, and then I have no idea where anybody went. <laughs> oh, no. So. Yeah, they, that happened <laughs> to me a lot, you know, and then everybody's like, oh, what are you doing, you know, so. So, so Kaushik is asking in the chat if somebody could share some games um, for Windows. So I think we've shared a few of them. Could you just um, repeat some of those? And if anybody else knows some, some other Windows games or games that you can play on Windows? Um, one thing I would recommend to anybody that's interested in playing games on PC or because there is a thing called uh, Game Pass on, like, you can actually get Game Pass Ultimate, and you can play games from the Windows Store free. Um, right now on PC, there's, like, 
200 and something games you can download for free if you because the first month of game pass ultimate is like one dollar so um if you watch steve sailor blind gamer on youtube he also recommended um game pass as well because the good thing about game pass is you can try out games and see like oh you know this game works out good for me this game doesn't you know and see what you like um and there's a lot there's a lot of good games on it um like for example gears i just mentioned um some of the other microsoft first party games almost a lot of them um so it's kind of worth it but yeah i, I would recommend that to anybody as well yeah no most most of the you know pc games that or, or the PC hubs for games. Um, I don't know right now what accessible games are on there. I mean, I could definitely tell you different, you know. I mean, of course, you know, you have like Steam and you have GOG. You have um, EA's got, uh, I forgot. The Origin. Name. Yeah, Origin. You got, um, uh, is it Arc? I think it's Arc. He is um, on Steam now. Yeah, it doesn't he, he, okay. He, yeah, you'd be yeah. better. Like better. older games, they basically right. went back to Steam now. So yeah, so I mean, you know, most of the games that are for PC, no matter if they're you know, like you said, like AAA or just brand new, you know, small developers just throwing, you know, putting a game out. A lot of them that show up out there go on those types of platforms and you know a lot of them are you are free sometimes or really cheap and then a lot of them you can try out like if if you just are have the membership and most of them you don't have to pay you know unless you want like premium service so you just sign up you know and monthly or you know when they have different sales or or other stuff you know you could play a lot of these games for free or just it's like yeah this month you can get you know division two you know and download it and go play it you know and it didn't cost you a thing it just um so those are the kind of things to kind of look look for how about you coda any pc games or anything that um i guess windows games that you like can recommend. Uh, I think. I mean, Coda. it just depends on so many factors. <laughs> yes. Um, Coda, if you also could tell me what like PlayStation games you're into too, because like, I'm I'm curious to get your like. Um, I have inputs. a lot of PlayStation games. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, because uh, because I'm I'm you know I'm kind of curious to get you because I'm low vision and you're totally blind, so. I want to like I'm curious to like get your input on what you think is good and accessible too. you know, that would be a good perspective. Well, that's the thing is that it's not really based off accessibility for me. It's just, am I interested in it enough to put in the time to learn it? It's like, um, I don't care about the accessibility. I just well, want, like, if there's a game I want to play, exactly. I'm going to find a way to play. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, it's because like, I, I grew up not knowing any other blind people. And so like, I had to kind of just figure it out on my own. And so I, I got creative and there are definitely parts of games I cannot do on my own, but like for the game itself, I, I just learn ways around it. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, true. <laughs> Joker Alice says older games um, in the JRPGs are easier to play than the. Yeah. Like ones. early final <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> Even the uh, new ones are playable. Even uh, what did she, what did she say? Even though the new ones are playable, and you can figure out uh, workarounds. Yeah, like I played the Final <laughs> Fantasy VII remake on um, just the classic mode, so it oh, turned it awesome. back into the uh, more turn-based uh, gameplay rather than the real-time action that it's supposed mm. to be played in. So it's just kind of figuring out alternatives. Yeah. And Danny also says that she, Danny Marie says that she knows some pe some blind people 
who play Forza games, but they are um but those are Xbox and PC. And oh yeah. hello, um people. There's some more people coming in here. Jordan, welcome, I see welcome. Jordan here. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Um <clears throat> Blindto says, for the fighting games, you mostly need to memorize the sounds. So I know Blindto, yeah. he's he's totally blind. So, you know, just, I guess, really, the sound is really important, right? Is mm -hmm. that? Yeah. It's reactionary <laughs> timing and memorizing combos. Right. Gotcha. And uh, yeah. Daniel Ray says, yeah. another totally blind gamer who um, streams uh, is also sightless combat. And he streams on Twitch. Oh, nice. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Right. Go ahead, And Sean. also, um, what was I going to say? Um, fighting games are not just about memorizing sound. You have to know, okay, what move do I do in this situation? What move counters this? Well, yeah. What is course. the, what is the <laughs> like, if if he does this move, can I punish it? Or, you know, is am I plus or negative you know it's like so many factors come into play yeah and people also agree um when it comes to game pass so that seems like a pretty cool mm -hmm. thing to try <clears throat> does any who is this joker alice says does anyone know if kingdom hearts is accessible on the pc I heard the whole series is on Windows now. Finally, only oh, took <laughs> like 13 years. Um, yes. Uh, well, I played Kingdom Hearts when it originally came out on the PlayStation 2. Uh, so I definitely just figured it out through that. Um, there are so many mods, though. Thanks, modding community. Um, <laughs> I hear that, yeah, there are a few that are based on more accessibility. I know there's one that has uh, more like high contrast, but like it's not gonna help me at all. So I don't really know what it does per se. Um, I know that they've made one that's more um, like auto, like things will auto um, more often, like you can auto attack or auto item. Um, so you have more accessibility in that. Kind of like what they have with the Kingdom Hearts 3 cheat codes, if you played that. Um, they made a version like that through the entire series. Um, I would love for one to be uh, more sound or haptics based, though. That would be amazing because there are certain battles, especially against like Organization 13, that are much harder for me to play on my own. Like I have yet to beat the data battles in Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe someday. So I guess we're um, we can just start wrapping this up. And um, the last question is: Do you guys know of any other resources or communities that people can join? Um, you know, for accessible gaming. I know Apple is is really popular because they have an audio games forum. Yep. <laughs> that one, and then also, um, you know, I recommend a lot of like YouTube people will have a yeah. lot of discord and like right. i would recommend steve sailor blind gamer although he he doesn't like he's he seems like he's really good at games even though he has low vision like i'm like surprised sometimes like it's like really he he must be on the like higher spectrum um <laughs> but um also, I recommend, as I said, OBS Rattlehead, and then, um, let's see, who else? Um, oh, also Illegally Cited. Um, he does a lot of spotlights for games, um, you know, so I recommend that. And, you know, if you can find any other good ones, that, you know, would be great, you know, so. Right. Koda, what about um, Able Gamers? What, yeah. What is um, Able Gamers is a charity that helps disabled gamers uh, with a lot of things. Like they have um, accessible tr controllers for people with movement disabilities. They have created like uh, sensors that so that gamers can like be able to move things with their eye movements. Um they have like accessible chairs for people who need to sit in certain ways or 
Um, they have a lot of panels, which I have been a part of, that will talk directly to uh, developers or game journalists or different people in the community. Um, and they also uh, are kind of a liaison for different types of uh, research pro projects or different opportunities for disabled gamers to get in contact with uh, people within the field. And I've been blessed with working with, you know, companies like Sony directly um, and helping them so understand cool. accessibility more. And so it's definitely a, an amazing charity to get involved when you are interested in gaming. It, do they have a, a website or how, how do you like? Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's just ablegamers.com. Um, but I've looked recently, there doesn't seem to be any like opportunities available, but I think that's just due to the current situation. Um, so if you just keep an eye out, you never know what you're going to get into. That's awesome. awesome. That is awesome. Is there any last words any of you guys, you guys want to share about gaming or any encouragement for those who want to try gaming when they're blind or visual impaired? <laughs> I mean, I just want to say that like i appreciate you know like all you guys taking your time to be here and especially carrie for making a discord server as well for everyone and making everyone feel welcome and i just want to say about like be you know if you enjoy gaming and you want to try it and you really want to get into it you know don't let anyone say oh you know, how do you play video games if you're blind? How do you play blah, blah, you know, like, don't, don't fall, f you know, don't let that discourage you. Don't let anything discourage you. Because sometimes, like, even though I have low vision, there's times where I get frustrated because I can't figure out where to go. And, you know, I can't figure out what to do. But, like, I still try and push through it, you know, like, so don't get discouraged. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, really just go out and do it. Have fun. Learn to laugh at yourself. I think that's the main thing. Like, if you make a mistake, don't take it personally. Like, everyone makes really dumb mistakes in gaming, even sighted people. Um, so just laugh it off. Learn from your mistakes and try again. And you'll eventually figure it out. And if not, like, there's so many people out there that are willing to help. Right. No, that, that's what I was saying. You know, don't, don't just not do it because of that fear you know just get out there and do it just you know run off the side run in the walls you know run into a group and get killed i mean <laughs> these things happen even sighted it people does. you know they 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 mess up you know put their controller down incorrectly and there they go just running off so you know just you know have patience with it take the time with it you know if it if, it, if you get frustrated just kind of put it down for a minute come back to it or you know there, there are a ton of other games out there, different types of games, different styles of games. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to learn mobile games because I, I'm not a mobile gamer, but, you know, I don't like them. I just say that, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so, should you should make them. Yeah, no, continue, continue. Oh, no, no. You know, I'm just saying, you know, just, just do it. Just try it. You know, the communities in a lot of these games, they'll help, you know, whether you're visually impaired or, or not, they're, they're going to help, you know, just let them know, hey, hey, I can't really see. So where do I need to go? You know, you'll, most people are more than happy to help, you know, more than happy. So, yeah, see you out there. I think it would be fun if, you know, some of you gamers went on, on the Discord and actually like played like with each other on a specific game i think that would be so i cool. think that would be a lot of fun yeah <laughs> that would be fun That'd and, and yeah coda we have a lot to talk about when it comes to playstation <laughs> <laughs> i'm down anytime right? yes. <laughs> yeah so thank you everybody for joining us uh you know maybe in the future we could have another gaming chat i know i have a lot to learn about gaming i again i don't do it much but i'm so glad that i have you know people like Midas and Sean and Coda to learn from. I just think that it's so cool. Like Coda, like she writes the menus down and all this stuff. And I think that is just amazing. She is a <laughs> I think mentor. That is, 
<laughs> well, thank you. She's a boss so. over there. <laughs> yeah, that is You're so have to cool. Teach me the PS4 accessible wise. Definitely. There you go. My mind is blown. I didn't know this. <laughs> and you know, I don't put another reason I don't play games much is because I get really stressed. Like in the game. Hey, I'm and still <laughs> waiting for your Final Fantasy stream. Oh I God. told you, I'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing. Okay, it's it's just an it's a silly little audio game, and it's like the the Blind Legend, and like my husband can attest to this. I'm like ah. ah! <laughs> like, That's so fun though. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm dying. I died. Oh yeah. Like, Carrie. Oh. Carrie, don't feel bad because that I've, was I've, me. I've, yeah. that, that was Carrie, me. don't feel bad because I've played like games like Assassin's Creed and yes. like yeah. that can be really frustrating. <laughs> you know, like instant getting fighting a group of people, like spending fifteen minutes yes. on a group of people and then getting oh instant god. killed. Oh my god. It's definitely yeah. a thing. It, or a, um there was another thing. game my brother was playing and i just kept falling off a cliff and i'm like i can't see where the cliff is <laughs> and I keep falling off. i'm like oh okay well forget about this game i'm done that was me oh, to the wild <laughs> I, I've made that mistake too. Yeah, that's, that it. was me in Horizon when. Yeah, that's one you, of the reasons you, I didn't play you it. Know, I'm keeping my distance. I, I I'm lining up my shots and everything, and I'm like, yeah. And then I do the first shot, which alerts the beast yep. statue, and then it just comes running then at you, over. and I'm like, no, and I'm running, <laughs> and then I I die because I didn't see the three of them behind me. <laughs> <laughs> they said they're gonna. They said they're gonna make it so you can climb anywhere on the new game Horizon. Oh, that'll be nice. Really? That will be yeah. sweet because yeah, I've fallen off a few things in that game. Just uh, <laughs> trying to visually capture, you know, the visually. It, well, for what I could see, it was really stunning. But you, there's a different few different things you can do, especially if you're low vision, which could help, especially at night. So, uh, some of the stuff will light up, but yeah, no. Um, Interesting. You, you die quick. <laughs> Danny Marie fun. says. Danny Marie says, "Have you really gamed if you haven't run off a cliff or ten? Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that yeah. is the experience. That is the experience. That and Danny Max says, "Go, go for it. Cliff dive or wall running. I'm stuck. No, it's a wall." <laughs> It's like, yes. am I supposed to be here or not? I don't quite know. I don't I don't know. Like getting stuck too when games are glitchy. Exactly. It's like, stuck. is this a glitch or did I do something right? I don't yeah. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But I guess it's like like you guys said, it's part of the fun and it's part I of do. the experience. So yeah. um I'm yeah. going to after the stream. I'm going to try to um, jot down in the description um, some of the different like Able Games and and the different YouTubers that we all have all mentioned, and I will put that in the description. And thanks so much, Beatus. Thanks so much, Sean and Coda, for joining me. This no has problem. definitely no thank you for having me. So fun thanks for having me. <laughs> and so informative. And I feel like a nerd though. These guys, these guys are like veterans like legends over here <laughs> oh no not at all yeah. yeah but um you guys again um don't forget to if you want to join our discord server we would love to have you on there oh, absolutely and Come we have join a lot us. of fun in there we, we have a lot of fun in there and you know join the dark side, the dark side. <laughs> we, have we, we have tea and Cookies and cheesecake. Yeah, cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. You bring whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks again. And don't forget to subscribe to Live Accessible and give this video a thumbs up too, especially if you want to see me play a game and scream. <laughs> yes. I want to see that. Definitely. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, yes. never mind. Now give you signed up down. for it. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I will see you guys in the next. Thank you week. for thank you for watching. Bye. Uh -oh.